Okay. Excuse the mess. I, I, ha I have nowhere. <laughs> you guys have no idea what I gotta go through sometimes to like set up to make these videos. And I just, I have no room. I could do this outside, but it's hot as hell outside. I live in Florida. So I tried to set this up on my desk, which I don't have any room on my desk. And I just I have everything everywhere. But anyways, um, I got to make this video for two reasons. One was about triggering like an IoT relay or whatever with the, um, with the VFD rather than the breakout board. Even though you can use the breakout board if you're not using a VFD and you're using just a, um, a Makita router. But this is mainly, this was mainly about the VFD. And then I also have, um, I gotta make a little video on how to install this, which is a way to control the VFD without needing to use the RS-485 connection because I've had several people contact me asking about why is it not working over the RS-485 connection and honestly I don't know I don't know if it's something with the controller I don't know if it's something with the VFD all I know is that this way is a more solid dependable way of working that I have found um, just from my experience and pretty much every VFD can work using this this method not necessarily using one of these but I'll explain uh, later so I want to try to not keep this or try to keep this video not ridiculously long but okay so first things first where do I want to start first? I don't even know. Okay, let's uh, let me just start with the triggering a an IoT relay or some other type of relay to because uh, you're you're already turning the the VFD on to to uh, get the spindle to ramp up to a specific speed, but you may want your dust collection to, your dust collection to kick on as well but maybe not at the same time the spindle kicks on so i've got a method of doing that and it's this is another thing you got to excuse i got all purple wires here but so essentially there's there's an onboard relay right here and you can configure how you want it to work so yeah this is a an absolute mess so these three uh, terminals right here the FB FC and FA those are the ones that correspond to, to this relay and what I essentially have doing right here is that there's 24 volts on this VFD output so I have this 24 volts looped into the common side of this relay which is this FB terminal. Now, yours may be different because there's something weird about the way mine's working, which doesn't make sense. And it's from China, so you know, there might be something wrong. But I will show you why it doesn't make sense here. Where's the wiring diagram? So, see how, uh, FB is like your common terminal and then FC is like a normally open which you would think would close when you you program it to function when something happens it would close but for some reason it seems like it's backwards on mine I, I don't I don't know the reason why but um, anyhow so the 24 volts comes into the common side and then I have this programmed to come on at 4,000 RPM so the spindle starts ramping up as soon as it reaches 4,000 RPMs this will send that 24 volts out to trigger a relay or a turn on 
uh, a solid state relay or the IOT relay so that that will turn on your dust collection and you can adjust it to whatever frequency you want or, or, or actually it's based off of frequency but I'll show you how you can figure that out as well. But yeah, anyhow, so your your DCM is a common or a, a ground. So that would go to one side of your the ground terminal of like an IoT relay. And then the 24 volts that goes through and out when this is triggered will supply the um, 24 volts to trigger the relay on the IoT relay, the positive side. So I'll show you, um, I'll, so, I'll show you this, I need to clean this, I'll show you the um, settings that I changed here, so, so you'll see PD052, let me actually scroll to the, um, PD52, the FA, FB, FC input function. I set it to eight, which eight is uniform frequency one reach. The contact will act when the output frequency of the inverter reaches the designated frequency, which is set by PD060. So PD52, is set to 8 and then PD60 is the uniform frequency that you need to set that will trigger that onboard relay that's on here now <clears throat> it's based off of frequency the setting range is uh, 0 to 400 Hertz now if you want to if you want it to trigger at a specific like rpm uh right now i currently have it set like i said to uh 4000 rpm so if you do 4000 rpms divided by 60 uh, you get 66.66 .66 whatever uh as the frequency that that relay will trigger on at and you can choose any rpm uh converted to frequency that you want just you just take the rpm value divided by 60 and it'll give you a number and you can take that number and put it in here uh let's see see i have it to 66.66 and I'll show you, I'll show you that, let me turn this back on here. Let me go back to the, control here. We'll do an M3, actually just for shits and giggles, let me do an an S will not do, we won't do um, 4,000. We'll do like 3,500. See how we're not at 4,000? See how we don't have 24 volts yet? So now that you, so since you have an M3 command already active, you don't have to type M3 again. You can just do S and I'll do four, Whoops. 4,000, now watch when I hit, when I hit play. Let me see if I can get it all in frame here. See how we have 24 volts now? And we're, it's never 100% accurate, but it's accurate enough. But we're, we have 24 volts now coming from the VFD through to trigger on a relay. Now as soon as 
I turn this command off because it'll turn off at 4,000 as well. I'll do a M or as soon as the frequency gets lower than 4,000, I'll do an M5 and hit play. And we're, we're off now. So your spindle turned off, your dust collection turned off. Okay. So that's how, that's how that works. It's super simple, super easy. keep getting a, a disconnect but I got so many electronics and things going on here and I think I keep blocking my router which is my Wi-Fi which is right out there so okay now for now for the cr controlling the spindle with the breakout board without the RS-485 connection. Now, this is, this is something that um, you, it's, you're gonna have to put under the tool tab, you're gonna have to select the PWM spindle. Um, you don't need the tool enable mode or any of that stuff enabled probably still want to set this to 24,000 there, there are a couple things with this that you got to keep in mind like if you if you have a laser as well the, there's some things that you may have to do to um, I'll just I'll, I'll try to explain I'm so every time I make these videos I'm so uh, just scatterbrained and I, I'm trying to cover it, it everything that I can but I'm just kind of all over the place so essentially you're gonna be using pin 17 in a ground but but that's what this laser output uses too just internally it's you it's using 17 and ground what 17 is go back to the control tab and the indicators pin 17 is tool PWM it's the same thing that the laser uses uh, the, the laser uh, knows its power setting based on that pulse width modulation that that voltage um, that voltage range in in this instance it's 0 to 3.3 .3 volts so what this little guy right here does is it it'll take that 3.3 .3, that that 0 to 3.3 .3 volts and essentially boost that voltage and the output will be a an analog voltage which is just a a, a 0 to this thing will do 0 to 5 volts or zero to 10 volts. There's a little onboard jumper right here to switch between either uh, zero to five or zero to 10. So it takes that 3.3 that volt in and then will output a zero to five or a zero to 10. But in order to make that boosted voltage, you need to give this voltage, but again, this VFD has not only a 24 volt, a five volt and a 10 volt, but also this only works, you, you have to have at least a minimum of 12 volts. That's why I think it's 12 to 30 volts you can uh, put into it. So I'm using the 24 volts to feed voltage into this so that I can get that boosted voltage in order to control the VFD's speed through the ACM which is your analog common or analog ground and then your VI which is your voltage input and also on board here is a little potentiometer that you can uh, you can fine tune the output voltage of 0 to 5 or 0 to 10 volts 
and I'll show you I will show you um, why does that keep disconnecting jeez well I mean I do got a lot going on so I guess so let's go back to the MDI tab we'll do an M3 Jesus Christ come on S24,000 Okay So we're at 24,000 Again, our relay has clicked on So now we have 24 volts coming out This is really hard to kind of try to figure out what to do here with one hand. So I'm on the, the input term. So we got 10 volts going to it right now. Okay. That's coming from this guy. So it, it has taken that 3.3 volts, boosted that voltage to a 0 to 10 volts, and we're at we're at 10 volts so watch what happens when i and like i said this is not a hundred percent accurate so uh whoops uh, so s we'll do twelve thousand. so that should be about five volts we're at around twelve thousand. Come on. Around five volts. So it's adjusting speed based on the voltage that is being fed to it. And like it's coming from this guy. So needs power, takes the incoming signal, pulse width modulation outputs it as an analog boosted signal to be able to control the VFD's speed without RS-485 and pretty much like I said all VFD's have this uh, they have several different options I will show you that it's configurable in here let me open up the manual let me go to uh, it's setting PD070 so you can set it to um, specifically the the analog the analog common and the VI terminals you specifically have 0 to 10 volts or you can do 0 to 5 volts, or you could do 0 to 20 milliamps, 4 to 20 milliamps. Pretty much all VFDs, this cheap one and even the high end, high dollar ones, are going to have an option for you to set different ways that you want the uh, big, big motor to ramp up or slow down. Um, it, they're all pretty much like that. You, you could. You could have a non Huan Yang brand VFD and control it this way. Um, yeah, so that's that's how this little guy works. Um, I'll show you it actually on Amazon. It's it's this little thing right here. It's a close up. So there's your your input voltage, the 24 volts or anywhere from 12 to 30 volts I believe the uh, signal coming from the one for any controllers here the 3.3 the volts or pin 17 
and then a ground from the breakout board and then these two will go out to the uh, VFD the uh, this would go to ACM and this would go to VI um, and this thing is $16.99 not bad there's there's several different ones probably some that are even cheaper um, this is just the one that I had grabbed so yeah that's that's pretty much it that I wanted to show y'all very simple to trigger a dust collection system via a IOT relay or some other type of triggered power uh, uh, you know what I'm saying um, something like an IOT relay or an, or a solid state relay you can you can do it this way uh, very easy and I, I I was toying, toying around with ways that I, I wanted to make this happen and this seemed to be like it made the most sense because we're not going to be running these spindles very uh, low RPM so you know you, you could have this thing probably ramp up to full speed if you wanted to or at least have it maybe turn turn this relay on at like 8,000 RPM or, or 6,000 that way this this can come on get roughly up to speed and then turn dust collection on so you don't have both trying to come on at the same time very easy um, but keep in mind this relay is only rated for about three amps but if you're only using this relay to turn other little relays on you should be fine the relays won't be consuming too much power but you got that 24 volts there to, to be able to use to turn some, some relays on. Oh yeah, that, that's what I meant to say. So you got to keep in mind if you have a laser, you're going to need a way to kind of like, like an inline switch on the wire that goes to like either the ACM or the VI so that this so that the spindle doesn't come on and run or you can disconnect power to the, the spindle it, it there's some other little tweaky things you can do because if th this is if you go to run the remember that this is using the same input that is an output for the laser so if you're using a laser and your VFD is on, your laser is going to be trying to fire and your VFD is going to start probably ramping up too. So you want a way to be able to just kind of like have a little inline switch that just kills the, the signal going to this to ramp up the, the VFD. There's some other little tweaky things that you can do that I know how to do, but that's, that's like a whole nother level of video. So holy shit i'm already at 20 24 minutes yeah i'm gonna go ahead and end this here if you guys got any questions just just ask all right thanks for watching